hip hop is a beautiful art form that continues to evolve, and that is the very definition of freedom. It's music that was made by poor people. And so it became the language for the youth. It became the education for the youth. It became so much for us. My love note to hip hop would be happy 50th. Hip hop at 50 is, uh, it's fresh and refreshing, man. It was a genre that wasn't going to make it. Now, nothing can be pushed in the world without having hip hop involved. It has influenced every single industry across the globe. Technology, art, language, fashion. I think hip hop has evolved from just being the worker to being an owner. I love seeing the woman today. I think there's a lot more women that have existed in hip hop than ever before at the same time. Hip hop is one of the most beautiful things I believe that was ever invented. Shout out to Cool Herc. It's the number one genre in the world. It connects everybody. Hip hop is part of the fabric of who I am. And so at every point in my life, I can pinpoint a moment inside hip hop culture that helped to shape me. Congratulations on your first 50 years. You've always been beautiful. What would I say to hip hop? Thank you for being my real first love. Dear hip hop, roses are red, violets are blue. I'm glad I found you. <laughs> you mean the world to all of us, and we just want to keep feeding you so that you can go around the world, around the world, and around the world. You're watching Hip Hop at 50. Rhythms, rhymes, and reflections. So obviously, you know, we're celebrating Juneteenth and um, just the impact of hip hop, 50 years of having a voice that we've used in so many different ways. But when we go back to hip hop's beginning, 1973, we have the first house party where Cool Herc is DJing and sparks the sound of hip hop. And by the end of the decade, I mean, we had evolved so much sonically that we started to see hit records. Like Sugar Hill Gang's Rapper's Delight was huge. Now what you hear is not a test, I'm rapping to the beat. When did you first realize that hip hop was more than just music? You could date it back to the message. The message with Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five with Melly Mel. You go in the ghetto living second rate and your eyes will sing a song of deep hate. They were the first, that was the first conscious hit record. The end of the video of the message, they get locked up in the back of the police car. Like, yo, we ain't do it. We ain't, do, you know. Yeah. And so it, it's a strong message. It was super strong. It was the first time I remember seeing a, a, a video or a song where that's somebody's talking about what, that, what, what the, the real struggle looks like. It's saying to America, you don't really know who we are, so let me tell you, it's like a jungle sometimes. It, it makes me wonder how I keep from going under. And that song helped us understand the drug addiction, the crime, the seedy underclass and the culture of the city that made life hell for many uh, inhabitants. We was voiceless. And so that's why, you know, I speak up for so many of the people where I grew up is because we used to get abused by the police. It wasn't no social media where you could turn the camera on. Mm. Wow. Imagine we didn't have hip hop. Imagine we didn't have that voice. I must have been five years old, you know, eight years old at the time and you could realize that this was something that was crossing cultures and crossing languages, you know? And it was, as you say, in the plight of our people. And then as I got older to KRS-One, um, self-destruction. Ooh. It was the first time I remember seeing a collective where we unified and you saw the power of people coming together and it was, for me, it was super powerful to see that. We got ourselves together so that you could unite and fight for what's right. You got Martin Luther King, you got Malcolm X, you got Kennedys. Anybody that was speaking up for justice, they was getting knocked off. True. So when you look back at Public Enemy, you say like, damn, these guys was like putting themselves in the line of fire. 
one of the most successful rap groups of the decade, Public Enemy, has also drawn severe criticism. Public Enemy is the group that wrote Fight the Power, the theme song for the Spike Lee movie, Do the Right Thing. They were giving me my own culture back. Hmm. When the school system wasn't doing it, I learned more about myself and my people through Chuck D. I say it all than any, any syllabus I had until I got to college. You know what was dope too is the way that we would learn about different places. And you think about like NWA coming out. I never traveled outside of New York. I didn't, I didn't know what the hood in the West Coast even looked like. So it was like social media, right? It was like a news network in some type of mm. way. I feel like hip hop educated us. NWA, I, I more relate, I'm trying to keep this ungangster as possible. No, but, but I related in a major way to NWA. <laughs> hip hop, you know, people had their own story to tell all around the country. The Los Angeles rap group NWA drew fire from police because its album Straight Outta Compton talked in brutal and vulgar language about retaliating against cops for their anti-gang sweeps in the LA area. Police coming straight from the underground. A young got it back cuz I'm brown. And not the other color so Every word was measured. And think about it. That song comes out 88 and then Rodney King in 92. We're talking about the videotaped beating of Rodney King. When you think about the Rodney King, the riots and all that, this was the soundtrack. You look at, you know, cities like Baltimore, Ferguson, you know, you're, you're seeing the same things that were being talked about in the late 80s by NWA still happening, still capturing headlines right now in 2023. You know, F the police. That was the type of songs we would sing on the front lines when we were in Louisville, when we were in Minneapolis, right? Standing Still for those Black songs? Black. Still those songs, yes. right? So it's true. It's it's this connecting point. And I think that, you know, we're talking about hip hop turns 50, but I think that like hip hop is a living and breathing thing that we are constantly creating. When I think about Black Lives Matter, I think about Kendrick Lamar. If I'm all right and you all right. Well, we gonna be all right. Kendrick Lamar has really kind of picked up the pole where his predecessors, NWA, left off. When did we first see that connection serve us? I could say when we elected Obama. Thank you. God bless you. And may God bless the United States of America. You see how divisive this country is now. It's never changed. It's always been divisive, right? But because of hip hop music, it brought a generation of people who grew up under hip hop who were partying in the clubs and loving this art form together. And they was like, yo, I could rock with him. Like, I don't see it as he's the black man, I'm the white man, you know what I'm saying? I remember that night he won and uh, I went to the club, I was in Miami <laughs> and they, the whole club. Young Jeezy, my president is black. Yeah. This, I mean, <laughs> 150 times, like, they wouldn't stop. He was a man who was conversant with the lyrics and the lyricism of hip hop artists. And then they supported him. And, you know, you've just gotta kinda let it. President Obama is known as the first hip hop president. If you make a gesture of brushing the dirt off your shoulders, you're pretty, you're pretty hip. This is not so strange in hip hop of having a, a young woman or a black man in power you know, in ways that I don't think America had never seen. So now maybe in your generation, you're seeing this whole new crop of leaders, artistic or whatnot, that we've made space for. When Obama first got elected, I got my first invitation to the White House, which they asked me to come a host a panel on criminal justice reform. I know what I see, I knew what I saw growing up, but I hadn't done work in the space. I didn't feel worthy in, of, to some extent. And then they explained to me that the reason they wanted me there is because it is my audience that this topic most affects. That's right. And so when I understood that, I was like, absolutely, that's my seat to have. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honor to introduce to you the President of the United States, Barack Obama. So I wonder, as a culture, when do we take ownership that, that I, I we belong you. in every space. Yeah, yeah sure. so I would say, so I actually worked in the Obama White House in 2016 on criminal justice reform. I was one of the youngest interns there and I was 19 at the time. There are people in those positions that are advocating 
for us to make those spaces and have those rooms and also realizing that we need to make sure we bring everybody up in here. Yes. I think that really is what hip hop has done and it continues to do. It's like- But hip hop let me go to Capitol Hill and represent American people on behalf of prices and transparency in healthcare. Mm -hmm. They know what I came from and I tell them, listen, I gotta speak for the voiceless. And that's the beauty of it. I mean, what do you yeah. see for the future of it? What, what does hip hop look like at 60? What are we doing socially? What we're seeing right now in our country is the erasure of our history. And so I think that when I am imagining in the next 10 years hip hop, I see the importance of protecting our culture, right? It's not just about the TikTok trends, but it's a deeper history that if we don't protect and we don't understand fully, then it's gonna be rewritten for us. I mean, I mean. <laughs> I mean. Hold on. And see, they can't stop this train. They may try to take out creative writing at the schools. We just gonna start writing in the loose leaf paper. You can take out dance. I'll rip up the linoleum. You can not stop us. Hip hop was birthed directly connected to the fight for liberation. And so when I think about our generation and the fact that we are so disconnected from the work that it's going to take to get us there, I think that we have to do a complete call in, right? From the rappers to the executives to how are we making sure that we're supporting the future MLKs, Malcolm X's, Fred Hampton, Shirley Chisholm's, getting organized from across all different spectrums and shaking it up, because that's what we're here to do, right? It is. Amen. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.